Good morning once again and welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We kick off this morning by going through the major stories making headlines across the country this morning. And uh, we will be uh, having the analysis with our guest, Mr. Ezekiel Nyai Talk. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be on PLOS TV Africa. Good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Good to see you. Let's kick off with uh, stories from the Punch newspapers this morning and see as many of them as we can take uh, before we move on. The first one you can see there says, Buhari goes against judgment, bypasses National Assembly, and that's with regards to the service chief's appointment. Buhari goes against judgment, bypasses National Assembly. They need confirmation, says Kayamo. Appointments not substantive, says Femi Falano, and also they can't get salaries. New posts illegal without Senate's confirmation, uh, Sands, uh, senior advocates of Nigeria are saying. And also the president not compelled to get National Assembly confirmation, declares presidency source. Also on the punch, it's been difficult keeping our promises, says the president. Okay, and we can't force Nigerians to take COVID-19 vaccine, Sultan says. A group back showing cars, Noble Laureate says Buhari further dividing Nigerians. Uh, we also can find on the punch this morning just the important ones. Federal government evacuates 802 Nigerians from Saudi on Thursday and Friday. An NIS spokesperson says, I was abducted in church and sold to Fulani kidnappers. The DSS teams up with police, probes, or shoon cops killing by operative. And uh, we also can see there, Oni, Makinde, Akiri Dulu, meet Buhari, uh, or your demands, more Mopo units. Um, let's um, see that uh, Lagos completes 216 housing units in Surulere and others. And or your, um, I'm not sure what this is now, or your tackles, Ibarakba, and others, kidnappings and killings with 200 Amotekun core. All right, Mr. Ayatok, let's um, bring you in um, with one or two of these stories. Yeah, and um, the very first you would expect is that um, Lagos completes 216 housing units in Surulere. The issue of housing has not really been given the attention it deserves in our national um, politics and um, governance system. And yet we know that in Maslow's um, pyramid of human needs, you have food, clothing and housing. And not only on the Maslow's uh, pyramid, be even in uh, with respect to provision of jobs with respect to you know indices that tell the, the level of development of the country or society housing always comes tops even in the in, in the u.s when um, president biden came up one of the first areas that he tackled one of the top three areas was housing how is it that in nigeria housing is a poor appendage housing is almost um, irrelevant insignificant and yet we spend over 40% of our income on housing, rent, you know? These are things that we really need to start to have governance that interrogates what governance is all about. I keep saying that we run political governance and not cerebral governance. And as a result, at the end of the day, the things that should be in front are put at the back. The things that should be at the back are put in front. For instance, now, how do you mop up the people that all these insurgents are doing, are, are using, and they have no jobs, if you embark on massive construction, housing construction in the Northeast? I, I, I'm into estate building, and I can tell you from first-hand experience that mm. nothing mops up the rest you than housing delivery. So I want to commend the governor of um, um, Lagos State for that. And I want to also recommend that all other governors and the federal government, I know they are having the national housing program, but when you look at the budgetary provision, you don't see a certain mindset, a certain intention behind it. It's like, um, you know, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And it shouldn't be so. Housing right. is a strategic national weapon to fight poverty and bring about peace. So I am I'm very impressed with the gov okay. governor of Lagos State. And then you look at um, <laughs> Buhari goes against judgment, bypasses National Assembly. I just don't know when this will stop. Number one, the president has presidential advisors. 
these people are aware of the timelines in the National Assembly. They are also aware of the laws of the land. We were not, um, for, for so long now, we've been, you know, clamoring for a change in the service chiefs. So it's not something that happened overnight and we were not prepared for it. But one should have known the processes and the procedures. I'll need to make an appointment. I'll need to send the appointment to the National Assembly to give confirmation. I'll need to there, you know, swear them in and then they become substantive. We know this, we've known this for a long time, for years. We also know that the National Assembly has timelines when they go on recess. Now, why do you wait until when the National Assembly is going on recess and you now make an appointment and bring about an absolutely needless controversy? I can tell you for free that it will not take 10 minutes in the Senate for this vote to be confirmed. It will not. Because number one, a whole nation is in need of it. They ask for it. So I don't see how, and number two, the National Assembly is said to be in the same bed with the, with the, with the presidency. So I don't really see where there will be a problem. So I'm just asking, wasn't this an absolutely avoidable and needless controversy? Now we are where we are. I want to call on the Senate president to please just hurriedly bring back the people, do the con confirmation, and let us just move on. Then, finally, if I may say this, our brother Baba Chilawa asked the question, who is presidency? I think the time has come for us to really interrogate that question. Because every time something happens, presidency, in quote, will just come up with explanations that will just make you wonder what's going on here. And each time Mr. President talks, you discover that him and presidency don't seem to be singing from the same song sheet. The president comes out as an honest person who tells you the way it is. And I can see that the presidency, presidency is usually unhappy because they want to keep the president. The president comes and says, well, we are in an emergency. Uh, wealthy. Oh, God. My has gone off. Oh, can you hear us clearly? I'm being heard. Yes. Yeah, we can see you. We can Am see you clearly. Heard? Yes, yes sir. Okay, 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 okay. It's from my end. Okay. No, president comes up and says, oh, we, are, we apologize for this. We are not doing as well. We should. President says, we are doing so well. We are meeting our targets. Everything is well. So the question is, who is presidency? Who is talking? And when will Mr. President be the one that talks? And whoever echoes what he's saying, echoes what he's saying. And not that they say what he should be saying while he's not saying and he's not willing to play that game. All right, let's uh, turn now to the Nation newspaper. The story is here saying security, Nigeria in a state of emergency, says Buhari. President meets with service chiefs. Military bosses resume tomorrow without Senate's nod. Mackinde asks the president for more riot policemen. As president meets with Oyo, Ondo governors, as well as the ONI, AFCC recovers 75 million naira from ex-minister's wife. Non-use of face mask, now criminal offense. Internet scam. Experts analyze Naira Mali's phone. My home ownership plans by Songwulu, governor opens project. This one also talking about uh, uh, Oyo deploying 200 Amotekun Corps in Ibaraka. Third mainland bridge shot again. Improved crude oil prices shoots external reserves to 36.23 billion naira. PDP suspends Oyo chair and COVID-19 updates here saying uh, the PTF commenting here saying lockdown still likely. Autumn, nine AIDS tests positive. Gumpi records 42 deaths and uh, so many other stories here on COVID-19. Uh, which of them would you like to talk uh, on or speak to Mr. Nye talk? <laughs> I think I would like to start from where I stopped. This is Mr. President talking. He says, Nigeria in a state 
of emergency. That is Mr. President. And yet when we have um, maybe the information person or the presidency, they will tell us that all is well. Mr. President says, it's not okay, we're in a state of emergency. So again, I will say that Mr. President is, um, uh, is an honest person, and uh, I wish he will just come forward and take charge. All these issues of I trust the people I work with, and I want to give them free hand to do what they want to do, they are not doing him any good. The time has come, like he promised us at Chatham House, the time has come for Mr. President to lead from the front. And I, I don't know, I've always said that the president has family members, has friends. I, I know that I'm not an executive member of any, any, any government, but I do have access to governors as friends. And we sit down and we talk and we get honest conversation. Not long ago, I spent about one and a half hours with my governor and we had honest, frank conversation. I want to believe that Mr. President does have friends that can sit down with him and give him honest situations. And at such times, you realize that there's so much misinformation that the leader has. And as a result, he takes actions based on misinformation. And when you sit down with him and have very polite, honest conversations, they get to see the, the other side of, of, of the citizens, what they feel about things, and then you are able to get certain explanations and feedback the people. The people call presidency, presidency, presidency. They have the agenda, and the agenda, I don't seem to agree that is in tandem with um, the wishes of Mr. President. Again, I will still go back to, um, to the governor of Lagos State and um, applaud him. My home ownership plans. I, I, I want every state government to be able to look at these, um, the steps taken by Lagos State government. You know, you can say that Lagos State is um, viable, you know, uh, com is commercial with respect to housing delivery. And there we have a major misconception or misunderstanding of housing. Please, this is my area, and I just want to use this minute to make an explanation. There are three different housing delivery uh, systems. The first is what you call luxury housing. It is by the private sector and government makes money from them by giving them an enabling environment. Right. There's what you call affordable housing, also by the private sector and government also enables it to make it more affordable. But there's what you call social housing. In our national housing policy, social housing is not affordable housing, it's not cheap housing, it is subsidized housing is standard housing provided right. as social infrastructure by the government. This is where every government should know that they owe the citizens that responsibility to take that part, chapter eight of our national housing policy on social housing. All right, Mr. Ayatok, let's uh, quickly squeeze in the Daily Independent. Uh, there's a particular story there that I uh, find interesting, and uh, you can see it on the you know, front of the screen. It says, uh, President Buhari signs executive order uh, mandating use of face mask. Um, so I think we should kick off with that one. There's other things um, on the Daily Independent. Uh, uh, Governor Autumn and nine others test positive for COVID-19. And also, insecurity, we are in a state of emergency, Buhari tells new service chiefs. We already spoke about that. Uh, Southwest PDP crisis, Makinde, Fireshe, Wiki and others meet today. And uh, COVID-19, student apathy threatens federal government's 10 billion naira out of school children mop up project. Uh, we also can see here reps to pass a petroleum industry bill in April, says Bajabia Miller. Um, and um, Orlu still under siege as IPOB's ESN plans fresh onslaught. All right, so let's quickly squeeze in your thoughts on the executive order mandating the use of uh, face masks. Yeah, I. <laughs> I went through the executive order. I think there were about 42 um, protocols in about six sections. And, you know, when you look at what is going on with respect to um, this COVID-19 and the responses of the federal government, executive order, and one of the people that I find to be very 
honest, and I applaud him, is a sultan. The question is, you really need to come forward and engage us and let us understand what is really going on. There's too much conflict. There's too much, you know, disparities. There's too much, uh, whether you call it fake news or people are really honestly confused about this COVID-19. And the Sultan says, look, can you please just come and level with us and take us through these vaccines? Can we have an honest dialogue conversation? Now, these different vaccines that have come up, usually you have a certain level of um, time that is needed for you to test the vaccines very well, look at peculiarities, are there certain things about the black man or the Nigerian in particular? Are there certain food types that we are eating? And if we take the vaccines, might give it a double dose or it might, might be uh, counterproductive. What is really going on? Are we going to rush into these things and then discover that 10 years down the line, every child born is born with horns in his head or her head? Really, what is going on and what should we do? And number two, why is it that Boosting our immune system has not become a priority. When last did you hear of the local foods that we eat? You know, I was just doing some Google on things like that, and I saw certain health benefits in garden egg, you know, for control of sugar and things like that. Who is giving Nigerians the protocols on our food and the things that we can do to keep us safe? But all this rushing to give us numbers, go and get vaccinated, go and get vaccinated, follow this protocol, follow that, follow that protocol, when government themselves are not following those protocols, who is just, you know, Nigerians appear confused. That's the simple wow. truth. Uh -huh. And all I want is, number one, I believe that COVID-19 is real. I believe that. I believe that even for our hygiene, you know, social distancing, washing your hands, they are good, not just for COVID-19, for our general hygiene. These are things that are good. But where is the National Orientation Agency that should be able to pass on certain information so that we own the process, not because we want to obey the law, All right. but because All right. we actually see the benefits to us as individuals and we start to obey these protocols. And then when government, you watch governors, they go to commission a project. I just see that they're flouting the whole thing. You know, well, when election um, comes... Uh, well, um, I, I, there's there's a lot you know that can be added to you know this conversation. Even the part you know where you've mentioned fitness, um, um, it may not be government's responsibility to remind um, everyone to eat healthy and to yeah. be physically fit. <laughs> but um, you know, I, I think it's you know with the, the the place we are in the world right now, everyone should be reminded uh, by you know they you don't need anyone to tell you you know how important it is to be physically fit mm. and to eat healthy and to live healthier. Um, and of course, um, you know, with regards to vaccines, I also believe that, yes, the National Orientation Agency has a huge role to play. Sure. Um, and I hope that they would step up you know, at a time like this to, to educate Nigerians more. Yes. Um, and uh, in the two minutes that we have left, I, I wanted you to still touch on a story on this daily independence. It's becoming very worrisome in, in the southeast. You know, people are really bothered about this and it's the crisis in Olu. The Daily Independent here says, Olu still under siege as IPOB's ESN, Eastern Security Network, plans fresh onslaught. So we're seeing, uh, you know, news here of yeah, planned reprisal yeah. attacks. Yes, um, it's the thing I keep saying. Why is it that in the Southeast, anything that happens, you bring out the soldiers? It's not supposed to be their role. It shouldn't be so. Why is it that anything happens, you go fight on dance, you go these soldiers? I think the time has come when this military mentality that the soldiers, you know, let me just, I don't, I, we don't have time. I would have liked to say something about the soldiers because I got, I boarded a flight in the US and, you know, all of a sudden I had people clapping, a lot of commotion and I turned, what happened? It was young commissioned soldiers boarding the flight. Everybody clapped and clapped till they all sat down. Young commissioned soldiers, young people. Now we have no respect for soldiers because the soldiers themselves have made the soldiers to become so common that they become an irritant to us. And I, I find it objectionable. 
These are people that should be held in awe. These are people that go outside the country, they bring us, but their leaders here have turned them into, in, into politicians, so to speak. And it, it, it upsets me. I think the time has come when the military should see the police as the people in charge of national internal security, and they themselves, the word of external aggression. Oh. Something happens in Olu, there's a misunderstanding, you bring out the soldiers. Why is it that? If the police is properly enhanced to do their work, we will be the better for it. The army is not the first line of internal defense, it's the police. All right. Um, thank you very much, um, Ezekiel talk. Always very interesting here in your thank perspective you. um, on these stories. Looking forward to another time. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, it's a wrap on Off the Press. Let's now uh, turn to uh, today in history, uh, a very sweet event that occurred and something not so great when it comes to, you know, talks about freedom and emancipation and all of that in a country in the southern part of Africa. And that would be after this break. Do so with us on The Breakfast. <laughs>